hieroglyphic poster. Ooh. A little alliteration for you. <laughs> I like it. Uh, we should, you should say that today at some point. Like, are you a how, poster? How many times can you say prolific poster? <laughs> hmm. Damn, they filled that one to the top. Uh, <laughs> was it frozen? Mm-mm. Mm. Not even close. <laughs> Just a lot of water. It's okay. We can't see it. <laughs> I don't think I got it on my shirt. Where'd you go? God, I can... Just on the floor. I think you added artwork since I yesterday, did. didn't you? Yeah. yeah. The freaking tech dealership and some gorilla heads. Your logo. It looks good. Thanks. Very uh, Roy Lichtenstein look going on in there. <laughs> the you got some color. Yeah. Got Roy. Oh. Tabitha's kind of stuck, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Tabitha, did you, you sort of sputtered out for a moment there. Oh, geez. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, what were you saying? Yeah, it's fuchsia. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yep. Pretty cool. Everything's running slow. What the hell? Hmm. The internet saying it's Friday. Yeah. Summer. What are you and doing now. inside? <laughs> if I move it closer to where the internet is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna move it closer to the internet? Yeah. <laughs> How does one achieve that? Huh. The router. I think it's over there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this week went by super fast for me. I don't know why. Every week. Probably because I was on vacation last week. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. And then come back. When you come back to the end of the month. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what was the how, thing? how was your vacation, by the way? We never uh, talked about that. It was good. It was good. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yeah, all right. Overall good. Got some sun, you know. Just, uh, we've been, uh, where we go is sort of like a, 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 the meeting point between my family and my sister's family. So uh, we do it quite often. And, um, you know, after you've done the same thing for quite a few years in a row, you know, but the whole point is just getting away and spending time with the family and then yeah. just enjoying the downtime. So we definitely took advantage of that. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, not too bad. So, but what we're, we're used to going to vacation towards the end of the month, uh, the end of August, and then uh, for the last two or three years, uh, Maryland schools, you don't go back to school until after Labor Day, the way it used to be whenever I was a kid. So, it's nice because we would take our vacation like the last week of August, and, you know, there was hardly anyone out in Virginia because everyone's back to school. Where this year, you know, we went a lot earlier, but being so used to that, so used to coming back from vacation and then kids are starting school, summer's coming to a close. And this year it's got me all messed up because, you know, it's, it's only July. Well, July is almost over, but still. So it's just messing with my head. <laughs> all right. But I guess in a good way. So. 
Well, we should probably get this started. I think we're a few minutes after uh, after one here. And Tabitha, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I asked you one for a lot of reasons, uh, obviously your expertise, uh, but the biggest thing is uh, I like to sit here and say, well, we haven't talked about social media in a while. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but changes happen so frequently. And I know even for myself, uh, looking in, when I started 2019, it's like, where are we going to go with our social media presence? Are we going to change it, uh, keep it about the same? Um, and of course, we've been working, Dealer Refresh has been working, partnering basically with you guys and, and Dealer Authority. Right. Uh, my dealership's about ready to do some things with you guys as well, so looking forward to that. Um, but in the midst of all that, I realized, you know, there have been a lot of changes uh, especially with like the ad formats, the style of the ads. Um, I learned something the other day that I should probably have already been aware of, but you know, as I speak to a lot of vendors in the industry that do a lot of social media, you know, a lot of them have really focused on just the advertising portion and not managing the dealership, uh, Facebook page or Instagram page, et cetera. Uh, they're just getting into the ad side, which obviously has huge benefits. It's all, still a lot cheaper than your typical uh, paid search. Uh, seems uh, as if most of the time it's just as if not more effective, especially for the money. Um, but what I found is, I, I need to remember where I was going at with that. <laughs> There's all these changes um, and I didn't realize that uh, if a dealership does pay a lot more attention to their Facebook page, their business page, that in return um, can result in better engagement and better activity and better ROI with their paid ads. Is that Sorry, correct? Sorry, guys. I think I'm having a connection issue. Uh-oh. Oh. All right. Yeah. Don't ask me to repeat that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was on my end. I was like, and you're frozen. <laughs> 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 I heard most of everything. What was the very last thing? Just that I didn't realize that if a dealership uh, or any small business pays uh, a lot more attention to their uh, to their business page, mm -hmm. that that um, in return allows their paid ads uh, to perform a lot better. Is that true? Right, right. So what's really important is to be actively posting on your profile, not just having ads syndicating out there, um, because you wanna make sure that you're engaging with your audience and they're seeing that you have a vested interest in the community that surrounds you. Mm -hmm. um, and the way the algorithms are constructed basically give authority to pages that are actually doing both of those things, that aren't just advertising, but are also, um, you know, posting things on their page that their audience would care about. And another thing is actively engaging with them. So you can put it up there, but if you're not adding comments and liking and, you know, creating those conversations with the people who are participating in that engagement, then that's not really going to help you. You need to be doing those things. So does it make sense for a dealership or small business to, does it still make sense to use the boost feature? At Dealer Authority, we tend to shy away from the boost feature. <laughs> I hear that um, quite often. Some people love it. Some people, uh, a lot of agencies shy away from it. Right. Um, There's a reason for that. Um, it's really because when you're doing a boost, you're basically casting this massive wide net out into Facebook saying like, hey, here's the content that I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. But is that con or is the people who are seeing it actually people who care about what you're posting, who are going to lead to a potential sale. You mm -hmm. don't necessarily know that when you're doing a boost, as opposed to when you're actually building a target audience with post engagement, Facebook business manager, and doing it that way. And you can see the differences. I mean, I would encourage people to maybe even just like test it out. Yeah. If you're not really sure if you're what side you're on um, and see where the differences are between like your click through rates, your website or your engagement, whatever your content is. Um, but we tend to shy away from the boost button. 
What about what about the doing a, a boost for you know branding purposes, or if you've got something that's uh, getting a lot of attention, a lot of clicks, and you're trying to pick up more likes or follows for your page, is it mm -hmm. worth doing it then? I would still say no, um, just because you'd be better off building a, a specific campaign. Um, for branding purposes, you're still looking for building an audience that actually is invested in what you're representing on Facebook. So again, if you're doing a boost, it's just about anybody. I mean, you can build audiences, but they're not as targeted as they would be when you build an actual campaign out. How comes the targeting said, why won't, why wouldn't they apply the same targeting capabilities to boosting as, as just as they do with normal advertising? That's a really good question. I mean, the cynic in me says Facebook does it on purpose. I mean, Probably. I don't, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really know. Um, but, you know, it could be beneficial, but again, it's just not, it's not our best practice. Well, maybe it's for national brands that, you know, are, are appealing to consumers. So if you're Apple or something like that, it'd be worth yeah. it. I mean, maybe, but even then, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't use it either because they want to be able to see where their traffic is going and really qualify it and qualify the cost that they're investing into building out that ad or putting in that engagement budget. Um, so, I mean, I can't speak for them, but that would be my assumption. What, what has changed over, let's say, just the last six months to a year um, for a dealership that, you know, maybe they have ignored their Facebook page and now they've hired somebody and they want to take it serious or it's time for them to just sort of wipe the slate clean and start over. Um, what are some of the best that you've seen, some of the best ways for a dealership that's just getting started or is doing a complete refresh sure. um, with their social media in order to go out there and gather the proper likes the proper followers, what's, if they're gonna start from scratch, what would be some of your advice based on some of the latest, uh, the latest stats or the latest ads, all that good stuff? Well, I think for Facebook, if you're starting from scratch, you obviously want to make sure that all of your information on your profile is accurate and up-to-date. Um, and then including posts that are involving, again, your local community that surrounds you, especially if you have any um, nonprofit organizations that you directly work with or you have any events with, and putting those posts up in addition to creating your ads that are promoting your inventory. Um, you can also do things like showing really cool features of any cards that are coming in, um, just to kind of say, hey, check this out, this is what we have on the lot right now. Um, maybe doing some lives, because as we've seen from working with you guys, like doing Facebook Live has a huge amount of draw and engagement. Um, so if you're new, that could be worth a lot to you, um, to do a live at the dealership or in the showroom, introducing your staff and your salespeople, um, something like that could be really great because I mean if you're starting from scratch then nobody beyond the people that have already purchased from you in this Facebook space know about you yet so this is your way of introducing yourselves to them so you so, so really what you're saying is dealerships should definitely be utilizing the story capability um, within Facebook but maybe even more so in Instagram yeah yeah sure I mean I'm a huge advocate of Instagram. Um, it's growing in numbers every single day as far as the number of people that are actively using it. And I was doing a little bit of more research before we got on this call, and I found this stat that people are actually using Instagram almost an hour every single day. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, first off, that's yeah. way too much time. Right. Between the hours of nine and five. Yeah. Right. Scrolling. <laughs> Um, I mean, I find myself using the Instagram stories more than Facebook. And we were having that conversation before we jumped on the phone. Yeah. Uh, we both agree that probably a lot of it has to do with UI. Um, right. And the fact that Instagram, I guess, just makes it uh, a little bit more easy to access. 
Um, I find that I just don't follow as many people on Instagram as I do Facebook, so it's not as much noise. Um, and I can get to the stories that I want to a little bit more quick, quicker, right. quicker, quickly. Um, so yeah, uh, what has anything changed when it comes down to content? Uh, you know, me working at a Ben's dealership, I hate to say this, I don't want to say I can cheat, but I can be a little more, I, I feel like I can be a little bit more lazy. Uh, than maybe some of the other manufacturers just because so many people uh, aspire to own a Mercedes-Benz. Mm -hmm. uh, they love the cars here in the United States. Um, so I can go out there and just do like a little photo shoot and not even boost it. And all of a sudden I'm getting an alert saying that this post is, you know, performing so much better than 95% better than every other post that I've ever done. Um, and it's just photos of a Benz. Uh, so I know not everybody has that, uh, has, has the ability or that, that luxury of doing so. Right. Uh, so I try not to take it, yeah. but I do. Uh, I'm crushing it at the Suzuki store for that. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> An old Suzuki store with a bunch of sidekicks. I'd be down with that. Um, so has anything changed on that front? And what do you see dealerships? Uh, using uh, for really great performing content, right. whether it's a story, photos, or what. Um, has any of that changed? Are you seeing any different type of uh, trends out there? Well, I think going back to what you're talking about, it really comes down to the content that you're posting. So even though, yes, maybe you have a slight benefit with Mercedes, but at the same point in time, you can take a really interesting short video clip of maybe this epic moon roof that a car has showing it like sliding back and posting that and that could have the same high engagement um so it's a, it's really a matter of quality content things that people want to know um and video obviously and we all know this is just rising in the level of how engaging it is on facebook and on instagram um, Instagram has the option to do IGTV if you want to do longer stories, um, which is something that we utilize at Taylor Authority sometimes when we find something really cool, a topic or a trend that we want to share with our audience, we'll do that. Um, but then there's other ways that you can um, post to your stories just by sharing something really cool that's going on at the dealership. And there's tons of applications out there that can help you do that successfully, even if you feel like you're a little bit of a novice when it comes to the content department so um my personal favorite for videos if i'm going to post to stories and we're talking about something is an app called long story and it literally splits your video into 15 second clips so mm -hmm. you know how when you're in stories and you're like clicking through yeah, yeah. Go boop, 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 like that this app does that for you so on your mobile phone so you don't even have to worry about you know loading it to your desktop and splitting it apart that's interesting. What's it called? Long story. Long, well, just spell. Just long story. <laughs> yep. And it's an app? Yeah, it's an app. Gotcha. That's definitely something to check out. Yeah, so I would suggest that for sure. Um, and then as far as, you know, some changes that are happening when it comes to ads itself, um, mm -hmm. starting on August 19th, there's gonna be a change in the way that mobile gives you a preview for an ad. So what that means is that the size of the graphic or the image that you can have in that ad is gonna be a little bit smaller. And then also the copy that you can have at the top is gonna to be a little bit more limited in the preview. So right now, you know, you see an ad in Facebook and you see the dot, dot, dot to click on it to read the rest. And yep. usually there's about like seven lines that you can see. But starting August 19th, there's only going to be three. So it's going to be really important that those first three lines of copy that you're building out for your dealership are really hitting home about the message that you're trying to tell your audience. Yeah, why would they do that? Well, they claim that it's for um, aesthetic reasons to match the redesign of the mobile app for Facebook. That's what they say. Oh, so, gotcha. We'll see. By the way, I just did a search for the long story app and it's apparently a dating game. 
That's so good about one. <laughs> That's funny. Well, the one I have is right not. <laughs> What are some um, of the uh, what are some other apps uh, that dealerships can uh, or should be utilizing? Whether it's for I mean, obviously for content, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe for videos, maybe for for imagery. Okay. Uh, what are your top favorite apps that dealerships should definitely be checking into? So I have a handful that I use every day. Um, Canva okay. is definitely one of them. Just Which one? Canva. Canva. Yeah, Canva. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And it's so easy because I can literally select whatever aspect ratio or um, social media application I'm going to be using, and it will give me a canvas to start on that's the perfect size for where I'm posting to. So you don't have to worry about anything getting squished or, you know, not fitting correctly. It does that for you. Um, and then it comes with royalty-free text, um, graphics that you can use. You can even turn things into GIFs if you want. Um, so that's one that I use regularly. And then as far as video editing, we talked about long story. Um, I also use Filmora a lot, like every week. And I'm not sure if they have a mobile option because I've never used it on mobile because I like to be able to use my mouse for editing. But um, it's the desktop feature is great. I love it. And that does the same thing. It gives you the option to pick your aspect ratio, depending on if you're going to post a video that's just going to be for desktop purposes, or if you want to have an option to have the mobile functionality too, you can switch it up. And then you've got your video in a mobile format that works correctly. So it's really awesome. Hmm. Kind of do a screen share here real quick. So yeah. Mora, which is a really cool name, by the way. Yeah. That's cool. Inspire try for free. Uh, so again, this is a, has a lot to do with video. Right. Video business solutions. Okay. And the other one you say was uh, Canva, right? Canva. Yeah. C A N V A. Yeah, this is good. I definitely wanted to get into some content creation today. Well, here you go. So, yeah, there it mind. is. Just for you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such a it's such a challenge. You're trying, especially at a dealership. You know, it's it's easy to get caught up in the. You know, I'm I'm kind of bored of seeing cars all the time myself, and kind of want to do something different. But your customers are always excited about seeing cars, so. Right. Trying to keep that in mind, then while still being able to create some interesting content that you yourself want to have fun making while mm -hmm. you know engaging your your customers. Right. Well, and I think from a design standpoint, um, the cool thing about Canva too is that you can actually load your brand standards. So if you have specific colors that you're using, specific typefaces that you're using, and you want to make sure that your graphics are all consistent everywhere you're posting. Um, you have the functionality to do that in Canva and not be concerned about, oh, you forgot to add the logo or something like that. It's right there at your fingertips, so it makes it really easy. It's almost like a template base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Adobe has something somewhat similar. It's called Spark. Um, I don't use that as often. Canva is more my jam, but you can use that too. And I think it comes with the Creative Cloud. If somebody in the office is using that, it should be an option that you can just automatically Yes. Good old 60 bucks a month for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and Adobe. Is that how much it is? Yeah, the Creative Cloud is 60 bucks plus tax now. Wow. Or you can buy a per app at like $10 a month per app. So if you want to get Photoshop by itself or something. Right. No, I saw here in the last. I shouldn't uh, get rid of Adobe. Yeah, that's I'm a fan. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah, light, yeah, light um, the best. What about some apps that are off the off the beaten path? Maybe just more around uh, content when it comes down to spelling or uh, oh, Grammarly for that. Grammar. Yeah, that's my jam. <laughs> yeah, Grammarly. Yeah, I still <laughs> can't live without that one. So whoever is I think some of these apps make us stupid though because we so become so dependent upon you know 
Yeah, uh, but I don't know how to spell it. I don't know if you. Well, if you. Uh, my daughter. My daughter's. You know, she's at that age, and she just the other day, she asked me how to spell something, and she goes, "Oh, never mind, Dad. I'll just Google it." And I'm like, "Why don't you sound it out and figure out how to spell it?" Well, because she I realize realized you don't know how to spell it either. <laughs> I, it, what I I don't remember the word, but I didn't know how to spell it, so <laughs> I'll admit to that. That's funny. <laughs> But oh. <laughs> I, I, I just wonder if some, you know, make us more stupid. Oh, I've got the calculator app. I've got, I can just Google the spelling. I can, you know, you just become reliant on some of this stuff. But anyways, uh, so oh. grammar release one, is there any other? What about well, scheduling? For do scheduling. You yeah, do you recommend dealerships schedule out some of their, their posts? And is there any... I mean, I know we use Sprout with uh, with Dealer Refresh. I've been using it for years. Right. Um, but I also find that a lot of those apps, uh, you know, they'll post, the formatting of the post will be great for, let's say, Twitter, because mm -hmm. uh, it's so limited. But when you're using it to post to Facebook or Instagram, um, you end up losing out on a lot of the functionality that you would use if you just went straight to that to that company's app so right. Facebook or, or instagram yeah so i'm a big proponent of buffer that's what i use mm -hmm. pretty regularly i've used that in the past yeah it's and they have an analytics option too that's really handy to check out so i can kind of compare it to what i'm seeing actually like when i'm in facebook and see mm -hmm. if they're matching up um, but every, every social strategist probably has a different scheduling tool that they prefer, um, like Sprout, for example. Um, some people prefer to literally just like go directly into Facebook and use their scheduling feature. Um, yeah. I know for video, that's way easier than using any kind of scheduling app just because you can't like use their, um, subtitle option and all of that stuff. So I, I do it directly in Facebook for video. By the way, we've got to give a shout out to Ryan Everson. His, uh, his comments over here are quite helpful. He's throwing out a couple other apps to look at as well. Okay. Yeah, he just said, uh, is it Agora Pulse is the best social media management tool by far? Agora Pulse? Yeah, A G O R A P U L S E. Oh, Agora Pulse. Um, and uh, Pro Writing Aid is something they just moved over to from Grammarly. Okay. So. Yeah, I I love Grammarly. I mean, I actually pay the additional fee on purpose just because I like to have all of the functions of being able to set the the tone and. Um, who my audience is, and it'll literally scan all of my copy and tell me exactly what I need to change if there's any errors for who I'm delivering the content to. So That's I love it. I use it every day. All of our team, if they're on live, they're probably like, yes, she talks about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you find something that's sweet and it works, you know, it's hard to contain. Yeah, yeah. Got Willis Williams is throwing out the Hemingway app. Oh yeah, Hemingway is great. Um, I use that sometimes too. That's good for making sure that when you're writing blogs, you're actually writing it for the correct um, reading level that SEO can recognize it and also for just like the internet in general. This was something that I learned about coming on board at Dealer Authority. I wasn't really thinking about like the level at which I was writing at and it'll sometimes tell you okay you're you're writing it too advanced of a level you need to like change out some wording um it's really interesting I would definitely recommend people trying it out especially if you're writing a lot of content and which one's that Hemingway check that one out we'll add those links into the uh into the Facebook uh comments Probably after the show, unless you can uh, look them up now, Alex. No big deal. Um, so, Buffer, would you? I mean, with their. What are we looking at here, Jeff? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> it, it looks it, like we're. I thought I typed in Sprout, but I think I got the URL wrong. But I guess. So, thankfully, uh, 
nothing bad came up. <laughs> Isn't it Sprout Social? <laughs> um, Although that was pretty cool, whatever that HP thing is. Yeah, it was. All right, close now. <laughs> <laughs> Just type in Sprout. <laughs> I think it's, Spr it's SproutSocial.com, I believe. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Um, where was I going with that? There's, so back in the day, there were a lot of, uh, there were a couple different vendors out there that were trying to break into the social uh, area within our industry when it come, came down to managing your social media, uh, being able to post <laughs> across different, uh, platforms at, at one time, um, being able to manage uh, or set up auto posts and all that good stuff. Um, I can probably go through an old blog post and do a refresh uh, and come up with maybe seven or eight. Uh, but then you had a lot of, uh, a ton of services out there, and we just spoke about quite a few of them that aren't automotive specific, but really, you know, anyone can use them. Um, do you find dealerships out there now that are using some of these old school or maybe I shouldn't classify them as old school, uh, but am that are, are industry focused uh, versus just, you know, something like Sprout Social that anyone could use? Do you, I mean, what are dealerships managing? The dealerships that are, because you get to speak with a lot of dealerships on this, uh, the dealerships that are really progressive in their social, what are some of the apps that they're using to manage their social media presence? What do you see out there? Well, it's hard to say like exactly what they're using for their I main thought your answer tool. Would be, oh, they all sign up with <laughs> authority, but. <laughs> so, and sometimes that is you. I mean, even if you do have an agency running and helping out with that, I'd still advise the dealership to have have you know some type of program that allows them to manage some level of it on their on their end well sure and i think on top of that when you're if you are using a partner to participate in managing your social media then it's important to be an active participant in that relationship and having content for your agency to draw upon it's just going to be that much more beneficial to you so even if that means every Monday morning, you go out and you shoot some 10 second video clips of some new inventory and introduce your new salesperson and you load it to a Google folder and you send it to your agency. You just gave them a, a nice little chunk of content that they can craft and use to promote you. Um, so I think that that's really important because what, what people are looking for overall, I think when it comes to marketing, because we're bombarded all day long with different ads on our social, when we're browsing on our desktop, we, we want a personal connection to the brands that we're engaging with. So as we know, we want ads because that's the purpose. We want to promote the inventory and let people know what we have available. But on top of that, you want people to have a personal investment in your business so that when they're showing up at the showroom, there's that intimidation factor of like, I don't really know them or whatnot is gone because you've built this brand awareness on social media that they've been actively engaging with for probably months before they even entered the showroom. Um, so that's my personal thoughts on that. But yeah, speaking of ads, there's a change coming to Facebook ads, right? Yeah, that's what we were mentioning about the, uh, the copy change. So again, when you're adding a new ad, you really wanna make sure that you're creating um, really engaging first three lines of text so that when somebody is scrolling on their phone, they're, they're seeing the exact message that you want them to hear and maybe throwing a little call to action nugget in there so that they're clicking or they're hitting the dot, dot, dot to see more information. Well, and Facebook's going to force basically three lines of text. Right. All you've got on August 19th, right? Right. Okay. I don't know if you mentioned that already, but we'll repeat it again for people. It's, okay. it's important. It's important. Because you could write a beautiful ad. And I mean, I'm sometimes when I get really excited about one of our solutions, I can like type something out and then I look at it and I go, okay, wait a minute. That's like several paragraphs of information and nobody wants to read all of that. Let me tweak this a little bit. Um, but it's just making you be more intentional with your words. So. 
yeah. it's important. They're almost, they're almost making you be, you know, tweet here. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Limited characters. I like it. I like that stuff. Makes you, makes you more, be more thoughtful. Right. Yep. So, Tabitha, if we were going to engage, what's a, what's a, or talk about what's a decent job on, on Facebook, you know, if we're, if we're going to measure or come up with a strategy for how we were going to tackle some of these things, where would you start? Well, I think when you're building out specifically for Facebook, your, your posts and your ads, what you want to take a look at is not only how are they engaging on Facebook itself, but how are they engaging where you're leading them to? So if you're leading them to a specific landing page about a specific model, or you're leading them to where you're hosting um, your incentives and giving all of that information, you want to make sure that even if you have hundreds of likes on a post, if you don't see a click-through rate, a positive click-through rate, um, and a positive session duration from that traffic on your website, then you know that your ad actually really isn't doing the job you're intending it to do. Um, so in a way, social media and SEO are very well connected because you need to make sure that that traffic is turning into a conversion. Um, so I think that's definitely the starting point. That's how I assess traffic I'm looking at. I go, okay, this, this all works for me this month on Facebook. But then if I go over into Google Analytics and I see, oh, okay, like the bounce rate in, increased or the session duration was really low, maybe I need to tweak my copy. Maybe I need to change out my graphics because the audience that's clicking on this isn't getting the information once they're hitting the website. Or maybe I need to change my landing page and mix that up so that it's mirroring more of what my ad is showing. Um, having that continuity across both places is really important. And then tracking it, so any clicks coming off of social media, is it best to do anything special with maybe a UTM and Google Analytics or to use something like Bitly? Yeah, you can use either one of those. Um, and I have to like remind myself to use UTMs more often across the board. Um, and something I've actually been testing out recently is with Instagram. Um, we actually just released a, a blog about this, but I'm using an app called Linktree which allows me to embed multiple links um, from the link of your Instagram profile. So I'm sure you guys are probably aware that what you can have in your profile is pretty limited and you can only have one link. So a lot this, of- This um, is just for Instagram? This is just for Instagram, yeah. So you wanna make sure that you're really maximizing that link. So apps like Linktree, and there are other options out there. I think it's um, there's like, lead page, there's a lnk.bio, um, some other ones too. I can send you guys the link of the article that we wrote, but they give you the capabilities of adding these additional links in your Instagram profile link. And when you do that, if you build in a UTM code that is set in those buttons, you can actually really qualify where your traffic is coming from Instagram because you can put in the UTM link tree and then all of a sudden when you're pulling up your google analytics you go oh wow like here it is here's all the traffic that went from instagram to my to my website um so i it's really cool i would recommend everybody that has an instagram profile to set it up today we're gonna have to rename this episode uh <laughs> you know tools for for working in social media yeah you definitely identified a few. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them out there. And again, there's going to be some personal preference that comes into play because some people are going to use some apps and go, but the functionality of this just doesn't work for me. It doesn't make any sense. And then other people are going to sing its praises. So, I mean, you've got to have to test some things out and figure out what's going to be best for you. Well, and there's so many options out there. And I just quickly pulled up the article. I believe that you're, you were referencing uh, over cool. on your dealer authority blog. So anyone want to check that out, definitely check out uh, the dealer authority blog. I think it's one of your latest articles. Um, let's dive a little bit because we got to talking 
about this, uh, what, yesterday for a while. Uh, and I hate hashtags, especially when people use them the wrong way. Um, right. They use them uh, as a way to express themselves uh, <laughs> rather than, you know, I mean, hashtags got their, got their start as, I guess, being uh, basically a, a searchable keyword. Right. Let's use this hashtag as a keyword. So when people click on it or when they do a search, you know, we can find all the things that uh, people have tagged that particular piece of content with. Uh, now we've got people using hashtags for every which way but loose. Um, remember that movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it popped in my head. Uh, what are some, how would you recommend a dealership utilize hashtag? I, I feel like we're going back 10 years talking about this stuff. But again, things have changed so quickly, so rapidly, just over the past six months to a year. I, I just think it makes sense to sort of tackle and, and go back to some of this stuff. Right. Yeah. Is there any way to get a QR code in there for Jeff? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's the next topic is QR codes. Well, um, Instagram has a version of a QR yes, code. Yes, they do, actually. don't they? The I name tag to the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 some, what, how would a dealership utilize hashtags in the most effective way? And going back to maybe some of the apps out there, are there some apps and tools that dealerships can utilize in order to find out what are some of the better hashtags. And should the dealership think not global, but should they think local when it comes down to potentially using hashtags? Yeah, so as far as hashtags go, definitely think local um, because I think that's gonna be your more qualifiable traffic when people are engaging, um, but the important thing about hashtags is that you don't want to overuse them like you were mentioning yesterday where you're making an entire sentence be a hashtag. <laughs> Probably don't want to do that. Um, but it's great for Instagram. Use sparingly on Facebook. Um, I think there was a point in time where people thought that hashtags Why, were going to be- What's the difference between utilizing a hashtag on Facebook versus Instagram? Well, they work the same, but the content, you have to remember that when you're crafting your content, you need to be crafting it for the, the platform you're going to be posting on. So it's not very common that you're going to see a post on Facebook with several dots and then a selection of hashtags below it. Now, if we were talking about LinkedIn, which is a completely different animal and that's a complete different segue from what our topic is today, but now that's really important to utilize hashtags on LinkedIn. So you're gonna see everybody actually using those posts there. But on Facebook, it's just not, it's not a major best practice. I would say use one and that's about it. Like for example, we use the hashtag innovation minutes for all of our innovation minute videos because then that way if somebody gets um, some great information from one of the videos we posted, they can click the hashtag and see all the rest of the videos. But that's the purpose behind it. It's, it's intentional. I'm not just adding it just to do it. Um, so, and then, but Instagram, that's really where you want to focus your hashtags, make them local, make them relevant to your brand. Um, there's other ways that you can search what people are looking up for um, as far as like keywords go. I actually have um, a plugin that I added to Chrome and the name is escaping me right now, but I'll look it up where I can search in Google the keyword that I'm looking at and it'll give me the number of times that month that it was searched for. And sometimes that can relate to, to hashtags as well. Um, if they're searching for certain keywords often, but I can't remember the name of it right now. And, I didn't and so. is it is a good practice to avoid some of the the ones like um, one that I like on there is no filter, and I'm I'm specifically looking at when I'm using that hashtag, looking for great photos that weren't extremely doctored in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great one to use. Or don't use maybe if you're. <laughs> <laughs> just posting pictures of cars. Well, you know, if you say you get a car in that has a really interesting color, it's something different that the that brand's never done before, you could add the hashtag no filter just to show that 
you know, the metallic features of that paint is, is actually what it is when they're going to show up at the showroom. Mm -hmm. That's an option. So it's, you, again, you just need to be intentional about the hashtags that you're including. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. And I'm, I'm not a, uh, Instagram expert by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I always found that people are mostly generic searchers. So if I were using Instagram to look for or research a car, I, you know, I was in the market for a Honda, let's say, I would just do hashtag Honda as my search. Yeah. Well, and if that's the brand that you're selling from, you're selling from Honda, then you would want to make sure that you always have that hashtag included in your post. But then you could also include, you know, some other features about the car that are unique um, as some of the hashtag options, just because maybe then that person might see your post and then also say, oh, what other cars have this? It's, it all links everything all together. Yeah. All right. So maybe some bling wheels, hashtag bling wheels. And... Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to find the uh, that uh, extension, Chrome extension you were referring to. And I'll, um... Across this article that's got 15, uh, 15 of them. So definitely uh, we'll throw that link in the uh, comment section. So 15 best Google Chrome extensions for social marketers. So if you were to use, uh, well, let me take a step back. You know, Instagram for some of the dealers I speak to seems to be something a little frightening because of the, the way content's created for it. So mm -hmm. Facebook or Twitter or some of the other social medias, you can just have a keyboard and start pecking something out and you've got content. But with Instagram, you need to have an eye for you know, what a photo is going to be like or, or a video. Right. That's, that's intimidating for a lot of people who, who might not be uh, creatively minded. Sure. Yeah. But the great thing is that most of us have smartphones that have all of these features built into them that turns the novice into an expert almost. I mean, so, you know, even if you feel like you aren't as comfortable, I'm sure there's somebody at the dealership that just loves to do it on a personal level. And if you can teach them about what's important for you, for your dealership strategy to show on social and educate that person on it and just send them out and have them do the content, bam, you've got an in-house photographer. I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, it's pretty easy. All right. Well, bam. What about <laughs> like, maybe some creative ideas? Mm -hmm. so, Again, I'm, I'm a dealer. I'm looking at cars all day and I personally get bored with it at some point. I mean, you know, how many times can you look at a Honda Accord that's in its, you know, third or fourth uh, generation of this particular uh, model or losing my mind. But uh, let's just say if I was going to uh, to do something about the Honda Accord. Um, you know, maybe I could do an Accord month. And then go in and, and snap photos of you know the dash, right? In different you know different settings or whatnot, or even the radio or you know the the onboard you know the navigation system and what it does, right? You know, and go and do that for less than five minutes, five minutes of photos, and you have a whole week of content there, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, anything that's unique that's really going to grab somebody's attention is usually excellent content. And also user generated content is really handy when you get in a tight spot and maybe you've shot those five videos and you haven't had time to go out and shoot something else, but somebody posted their new Honda Accord and they tagged you in it. Now you can actually repost their post, give them a shout out for posting, thank them for coming in. And you know, they have their Insta moment, um, which everybody loves, but you know, that user generated content is an excellent, resource. Just make sure you're giving the person a heads up that you're going to be utilizing it. So. Yeah, I don't How do you get consumers out there to uh, get excited about posting stuff at your dealership so you can repost it? Well, could you, you could ask your, your customers to, you know, maybe write up 
you know, say in one sentence, how would you describe your car right now? Maybe a month or two after they bought it to take a picture of it. Yeah, you could do that. Or you could even do a story. They could send you a really short video clip that says, I love my new Honda Accord. And thank goodness that I made this purchase or whatever they want to say, you know, and post it to your stories. Um, but of course, you, you don't want to just post anything. You want to make sure that you're using an editor's eye when you're getting that user generated content, making sure that it's going to reinforce your brand when it goes up. Yeah. The, Drew Amint is, uh, you know, saying that the problem with Instagram is it's very difficult to track any results from it. Right. A lot of well, people got excited about it. I think that if you are being intentional with what you're posting and then connecting them to go to the link in your bio and doing options like Linktree, you might be able to see more of that qualifiable traffic. Um, that's a way to measure because you're going to see everything on your analytics and you'll still see on your analytics referral Instagram, but you just don't really know where they're engaging. So having that application added on, it gives you that little added boost to know where they're going and then crafting your content around where that traffic is actively engaging. And what is Linktree exactly? I don't think you've, uh, did you mention this one? I did, but I'm, I might have been kind of rambling. <laughs> Sorry. Linktree is <laughs> an app that you can um, build into your Instagram profile to okay. build out some, some better linking so that people who come to your profile can hop over to your website. or Yeah. Because you're allowed what? Well, you're not allowed. Are you allowed any links in your profile or just one? Just one. Just so one. what this does is it takes so this that builds one. builds out almost like a a page with links on it to yeah. reference back to what you said whenever you direct the, the reader to visit your bio page for the link. Right. Go to link in bio for more info. You'll see that in people's comments. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's so. More and more lately. Right. So if you have Linktree set up, then mm -hmm. you can literally set, you can change them out whenever you want and you could have them go to your summer incentives, you could have them go to um, some particular part uh, inventory page, and then you could have them go to maybe you're doing some kind of fundraiser um, that's connected to the community. You could have them go there and then pull it up in your analytics and take a look and see where people are clicking. Um, and then build your content based off of that. There, there's testing involved. You have to test it out and see where people are engaging and then craft your messaging and your content to, to match that so that your traffic is flowing through to those places. I like that. I like that a lot. What about, um, what about ads? So we've spoken about uh, a lot about, you know, just managing uh, your, your Facebook page, but, and then the difference between, you know, the ads and the pages and how they, uh, how they work together um, in order to make your ads perform better. But Facebook has introduced quite a few new ad formats. Right. Just over, what, the last six months to a year, if not sooner. Um, and I know from my own experience, some uh, ad formats that were knocking it dead, you know, two, three years ago are basically like, they're not doing shit now. Mm -hmm. So what are you seeing now? Like, is there a new format that is definitely hands down outperforming uh, some of the other form formats? Uh, what are you seeing out there? So as traffic shifts more and more over to mobile, that's uh -huh. when you're going to see the popularity and the changing in the ad structure that's going to um, give you the best results mm -hmm. shifting as well. Um, so collection ads on mobile, we're seeing great traffic from that. Um, if you want to, do you have that article that had yeah. the options with the graphic in it that showed the layout? You yeah. want to bring that up? I think that might be helpful for people to see. But basically, the collection ad gives you the option to hyperlink different sections of the graphic to different landing pages. So if somebody's like clicking on a part of it, mm -hmm. and I think if you, 
I don't know if you can zoom in, but that very final format, and I think it says new in the top, that one, yeah, that's a collection ad. Hmm. So if you what haven't is, tested out collection, collection ads, explain. Well, so it's gonna be usually like an image, um, maybe it's a really great shot of the car and then multiple other images below it, but they're linked to different landing pages. So you can actually change where you're directing the traffic on each image. Um, and it actually opens up when you click on it into this really cool feature. I wish I could show one live, that would be probably really helpful. But if you haven't tried out collection ads at all, I would definitely test it. Our strategists love them. Could it be multiple never, cars? Yeah, you could put multiple cars. Hmm. Never used it. I've only, um, and still do with the agency that we're using, uh, I believe using the carousel. And I've really seen the performance of the carousel ads uh, pretty much tank. Is that <laughs> Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, I mean, I think well, that okay. there could be certain things that Carousel would work well for, but mm -hmm. when you're showcasing inventory, and especially since mobile traffic is increasing the way it is, I would say take your Carousel ad and shift it to a collection ad, or mm -hmm. maybe even do one carousel and one collection and then assess your traffic on both of them and see which one is performing better. Um, Cause that collection is where it's at. You know, I think I have seen these and I've been clicking on them and, and looking at them um, as we're in a new office here. We've been researching different furniture and junk to buy. And of course that gets into Facebook. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I've, I've definitely seen some of the things I've, I've looked at show up this way. And it's been engaging. It's caught me. Yeah, because when you click on it, it expands and opens up. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, test one out and, and see what happens. But we, we love them. We think they're great. Hmm. Hmm. What about some other ad formats? What else are you seeing? What about uh, Facebook Messenger ads? Are they taking off? Is this something that dealership should be uh, focused on? Are going to tell you information. Oh, it says I have an unstable connection. Can yeah. Uh, Jeff was asking about Facebook Messenger ads. Mess oh. Um. Is this fairly new? And should dealerships be... Uh, I haven't heard of it. I haven't seen it. Sounds intrusive. <laughs> That's something I'd probably want to talk with our social team a little bit more about okay. um, and see what they're seeing on that. Um, but I, I actually don't have a lot of information on the messenger ads. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Just going through this, uh, this article real quick. I didn't realize there were uh, some better examples um of the different leads so again i'll be sure to uh post this over in the comments yeah so what else uh 2019 uh you've already given us quite a bit of information especially around some of the top apps uh dealerships should maybe be considering uh so apps around grammar spelling all that good stuff um different app formats of course content um, man, we've touched on quite a bit in such a short period of time. You know, at one point there is a big uh, debate on whether or not salespeople should be utilizing social and or should it be the dealership? Should the dealership grant people permission? Uh, should they, you know, invite that entrepreneur spirit into the dealership? Uh, but then do it on a certain level where it's still being policed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still dealerships out there that block social media websites, uh, or they will open them up between the hours of 12 and one. Um, <laughs> there's lots, there's still a, an array of different uh, configurations out there and how dealerships are dealing with social media. Um, again, with, with your expertise and speaking with so many dealerships, 
Um, what are you seeing out there? Is it is it beneficial? I mean, probably a stupid question to ask if it's beneficial for a salespeople uh, or a salesperson to uh, to utilize social media. Um, should they do it on their personal page? Should they have a business page? Should they not have anything mm -hmm. um, and just rely on what the dealership is doing? Um, and who knows? Maybe there's a different format out there that I'm just not even aware of. Um, what are you seeing out there? What are what are some pros, cons, and and some do's and don'ts around this? Sure. So. I think that if you are going to encourage your sales team to have a social media presence that's representing your dealership, then there probably needs to be some kind of agreement between you and that salesperson that folk or outlines how you're going to be utilizing that social. Um, because if you're, if you're allowing staff members to have a social presence to post things when they're inside the dealership or anything that's reflecting your brand and your culture, um, then in a way you're directly connected to what they're posting. Um, so breaking down like things that maybe aren't acceptable as far as like attire, maybe you want to make sure that you're in your work garb or dress code, you know, just make it, setting expectations basically for people so that they're aware of what you're looking for so that way if you're not on Facebook or Instagram on a personal level and you're just scrolling through and then you happen to see um, Joe Smith salesperson and they posted this post and you go what is this you know it's it's setting that accountability up which I think is really important and a lot of businesses not just in automotive across the board have agreements like that um, mm -hmm. with their staff members. So I think that's key. And if you're really heavily going to focus on posting informa information that's going to help support the dealership, I would almost encourage setting up a separate profile, especially on Instagram. Um, just because you're dedicating that space specifically for the dealership. You're not posting uh, you know, your dog at the park on a Sunday. You're, you're posting things that are relevant to that business. Um, separating personal from the business side, I, that's that's my personal opinion on that. I think mm -hmm. it's important. Well, it's not a bad opinion at all. Yeah. No, in this day and age, it seems like the uh, the role of empowering people is the, uh, is the better way to go. Yeah. You mean not blocking them from? <laughs> from Facebook, so then they just take their mobile phone and go around the corner and use it on their phone, and now the showroom floor is not being manned or more manned. Yeah, it's just a matter of setting expectations. So then that way, you know that everybody's aware of it, and if something goes sideways, you always have that to reference and say, hey, you signed this agreement, you said you were gonna make sure that your social fell in these guidelines, this mm -hmm. didn't fall in those guidelines. Let's have a little chat, you know. No doubt. Well, anything else to recap? Is there anything else on the uh, horizon that dealerships need to be made aware of? Anything they should keep their eyes open for? Do um, you see any trends within the industry and social that, uh, that maybe could have a, a pretty big impact over the next six months to a year? I really think that at least trying out Instagram for your dealership is going to be important. Um, and you find a lot of dealerships yeah. aren't on Instagram. I there are several that are, but they're um, actively their engagement level or the amount of content that they're posting is maybe more varied. Um, so okay. setting up a regular posting schedule, just like you would with your Facebook page is going to be important to build out your audience and then start testing out some stories. Start, you know, seeing how you get engagement on that. Um, Jeff, mm -hmm. you said you did a story where you posted um, a poll so that people yeah. could vote. So, you know, doing things like that, build engagement with your profile and with your brand. And I, I just think that you're going to see a shift in how people are utilizing Instagram and if you get ahead of it and go ahead and start posting on it and start building up your content and your audience, then you'll be able to reap the benefits of that. I really thought email would never go away. Um, 
And I still don't think it'll completely go away. But I can't remember who I was having this conversation with. Um, but just, we're talking about different levels of communication. Uh, the fact that, you know, we know that form fill uh, hasn't increased. If anything, it's decreased or it's stayed about the same. Um, I know who I was speaking with. And we were just talking about how dealerships just, they still to this day just want more leads. Yeah. Would you like that? We just want more leads, more leads, more leads. But yet we know that the average consumer base, they're not going to increase. Leads are never going to increase when it comes down to a form fill lead. Um, have you seen where, and, and of course we've got chat, we've got, we've got um, text, and of course everyone's pushing text now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying that it's not a solution. It's absolutely it's a solution. Um, are you seeing anything, anything else from the social side? Uh, I, I brought up Slack because we all use Slack. Uh, could Slack or something like that be a level of, or a channel of communication? between the consumer and the dealership salesperson. Um, where does maybe video, and I know this is sort of a, a left term, but I know, Alex, you get excited about some of this stuff. Um, I was just wondering if, if, again, is there anything on the horizon that maybe would put that final uh, nail in the coffin when it comes down to email for a marketing B2B or B2C standpoint? Any thoughts on that? Well, I don't think there's ever going to, I mean, and I could be completely wrong, but I don't know if there's going to be a final nail for email because you have to think about it this way. So you've got people that obviously we love Slack. It cuts down on our email communication, but my mom doesn't know what Slack is and she's not going to check her messages. You know, I you've got, what is. <laughs> what's that? I don't know what Slack is. It sounded like sock when I said it. Slack. Yeah. You know slack. what slack is. <laughs> yeah, <Slack>. slack. <laughs> I'm <Go> sorry. <laughs> but, you know, she she doesn't know, and it could have been my accent coming in, so That's I apologize. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's you when you're building out a, a robust marketing strategy, unless your product is extremely specific, to a certain age demographic, certain person. You don't want to be limiting yourself and saying, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this anymore. It's not relevant anymore. Because there probably still are some people that it is relevant to and that marketing does work for them. Mm -hmm. But at the same point in time, do you need to be, I guess, allocating a larger amount of budget towards those tools that aren't being used? as often, you know, that's to your own discretion, but probably not. So looking at where your marketing is really getting the highest level of engagement, that's where you want to mix it up and move those monies that way. Um, I, I don't see people just using Slack for their overall email purposes. I mean, I think it's great for business purposes and keeping everybody in line and like, knowing that, oh, I can go to this thread and get all the information about a certain project. Yeah. Um, but as far as like from a personal level, I just don't, I just don't see that happening. Alex, any thoughts on that? Well, I was responding to uh, something Dan Sarah was saying about uh, Slack and how they use it at their stores. Um, I was thinking uh, there's, a, there's a group I work with who uses WhatsApp. Yeah. Uh, and even their dealer principal is a, is a fan of it and likes it. Um, and then uh, another one, um, at my company, we use uh, Microsoft 365, which is the you know, best version of Microsoft Exchange now and whatnot. And I think there might be a lot of dealers who have, who have switched over to that. And in there, you have something called Microsoft Teams, right. which is not nearly as nice as Slack from a usability standpoint, but it, it's a tool in your arsenal if you are using that product from Microsoft. So there's a lot and I'm all for this stuff. I mean, I've got yeah. been using chat since, uh, since AOL mess or, uh, AOL messenger days. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I still have my handle. I was going to say you still have your handle. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, well. um, but yeah, that's chat tools are amazing. Uh, highly recommend. 
And I will say this, uh, recently discovered an email app that's made email phenomenal again. Um, it's going to turn me on too. Yeah, it's Spark. called Spark. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't a Windows version. It's a Mac desktop and then their phone version. So you can do it on your Android or your iOS device. Uh, but the way that categorizes mail and keeps the junk out of your face and the important stuff bolted to the top and then allows you to delegate mail to other people. Uh, it also allows you to snooze things and, and bring them back up. It's, it's really good. I and what was it again? Uh, that one's called Spark. Spark. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, um, I was using, I was a big advocate of Microsoft um, Outlook even on my iPhone, um, it had some of the absolute best features. And it has a lot of the features that Spark has, such as snoozing, um, tighter integration, and with your calendar and such. Uh, but once you turn me on the Spark, I haven't looked back. I just I'm gonna have to get it. Check it out. And I love the fact that Alex, you can, you and I, you know, we share an email. Uh, you want to go back and forth. You don't have to send an email. It actually starts a small chat session within that email string. Yeah, you don't have to, all the BCCing and all that junk that you use. Yeah. More. You to do it. That more. Yeah. yeah. And you can, uh, you can write emails together, which is very yeah, collaborate. Yeah. yeah. You're responding to a client or a boss. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's, uh, cool. that's a cool feature. Spark takes email to a whole nother level. There's no doubt about it. So, all right, well, we sort of went off topic there a little bit, but we were talking about technology and apps. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely relevant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt about it. So this has been fun. Uh, Tabitha, we definitely appreciate you jumping on board uh, with us this Friday. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always fun. I, I know, again, social story gets played out, but it's also such a fascinating topic um, that, you know, it's something that you should probably, you know, we should go back every six months and just talk about what's changing. Um, and again, just a shout out to Dealer Authority, um, which is the company that you work with, uh, just, and it's the company that, that Dealer Refresh is partnered with. Um, we didn't ask you to come on today because you're a sponsor or anything like that. It was just the fact that, hey, you know, I wouldn't mind talking about some of the latest updates on social. And uh, you've done such a great job with us at Dealer Refresh and looking forward to having you guys come on board with the dealership here. So thank you. Uh, here's, the, here's a quote that Tyson needs to have in his marketing. Okay. Dealer Authority knows their shit. All right. So okay. if Tyson actually uses that, <laughs> well, I build the content, so. <laughs> I, I don't see Tyson approve of that one. <laughs> well, Alex, you know, if it's got a curse word in it, you're all for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> so, but no, again, thank you so much, and thanks for everyone that joined us today. Um, what do we have next week, Alex? Uh, we've got Andre Smith. That's and, right. Uh, we've got Andre back. Yeah, getting deep with, uh, like, some some really strong lead content and uh, how to respond to it. And yeah, he's Mr. BDC. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. He was last time he was on a couple months ago, we uh, had an overwhelmingly uh, overwhelming response. Uh, something that, you know, we consider it would be, but it, it just goes to show you anytime you speak about BDC at the car dealership, even to this day, people's ears perk up. They've got a ton of questions, um, and they want to know what's going on. So uh, looking forward to that next Friday. All right, guys, I am out. I got some stuff to get done. Again, Tabitha, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, Alex, you. great seeing you today. And uh, we'll see everybody back here next Friday. Thank Bye. You. Bye. <laughs>